And the big task, the big job for humanity is not to hesitate to go into one's creative resources, because there we will find the answer how to move behind the crisis, beyond the crisis, and move and create a more peaceful and more cooperative world. This can be done. And if we do it, we will find a way up, what I call the upshift. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm so delighted you could join us today because we have Dr. Irvin Laszlo with us. He is the godfather of quantum consciousness, in my opinion. Dr. Laszlo, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Well, Julie, it's my pleasure. I've been known her so much about you. It's a, it's a delight to speak with you in person. Oh, thank you. I'm honored. Let's just get right into it. You were nominated twice for the Nobel Peace Prize, and you published 106 books and over 400 articles and research papers. Where did all that information originate? Did you channel it? Do you have some kind of special powers? I mean, my gosh, all that brilliance in one body. Tell us about where where did all that come from? You know, I had a very difficult childhood in the sense this was wonderful, but not an ordinary childhood. I was taken out of school when I was already nine or ten years old, and I never really went to school since then. I was a piano prodigy, and so I was. my life was music and performing music. And I traveled all over the world when I was 15 already, having left Hungary and moved to New York. And that uh, background in music uh, s- separated me from the ordinary, everyday life, the proceedings one year after another, for, for going to school and following the road. So it was a, somewhat a special existence. And this existence liberated me. It, it got me to thinking, what am I doing? Who am I? There were no pet answers because I was moving around in the world and I was understood to be a piano, a concert pianist. <clears throat> but I didn't want to spend the rest of my life playing p- piano for people. I wanted to understand what it is that I'm doing what, who am I? What is this world like? Very big question. And so, so I started reading up on it. I started taking courses at Columbia University, then in Munich, Germany, and, and uh, asking questions of young people that I met with and, and professors and so on. And I started writing down my thoughts, you know. And my, I never thought that my thoughts would be of interest, my writings would be of interest to anybody else. I just wanted to write because I thought I want to understand. But then by accidentally, I met, uh, after one of my concerts, I met a young man who talked to me about this and asked to see if I wrote anything down. I gave it to him. He disappeared with it. This was in a, in, a, in a dining room after a concert in The Hague in Holland. And next morning he showed up and said, we, we want to publish it. And I said, who are you? I didn't know. He turned out to be an editor of a famous publishing house, Martinus Nyhoff in Holland. <clears throat> so he published my book. He worked on it for another year, my notes, to make it into a proper book form. This was in 1963. In 1963, my first book appeared. And that was a beginning of a complete change of life for me. I was no longer a pianist. That became a hobby. I became an academician. I became a professor of philosophy then in, 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 first in New Haven, in Yale, and then in Princeton, and then New York State University. And then this became a second phase in my career, you see. Nothing was not an ordinary kind of a life procedure one year after another. It was rather a special way. But I always stuck to this. I always stuck to trying to find out what's happening. What can I do? that makes sense for my life. I'm still doing that. I'm still proceeding on that. Now in company with many people who follow me, who work with me, who are partnering with me. And so this gives me a great deal of satisfaction. I'm dedicating my life to helping the human species, helping humanity to live well and to create a bright future on this planet. And I find many people who are supporting me I've started a movement called the World Upshift Movement that's running very well. I'm just now launching another movement called this Humanity Sacred Mission Movement because I claim that we do have a sacred mission 
what what humanity has is here for the planet for what is it what we need to do you know so all of these things are are excited they are not ordinary kinds of things but i always pursued what i thought was important and interesting in life where did you where was it like you just started thinking about this stuff and then the ideas came to you and you were led from one thing to the next to the next to the next how what's the process what did you what did you find was your process for for really bringing in this information but you know i had to document the ideas that came to me but the ideas flew kept flowing mm-hmm. coming in they still do I still sit down to write and to with the key idea. I try to work it out, and they start flowing. And so I'm 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 not really claiming that I'm uh, that I'm really uh, authoring all that. You know, I'm not really writing, creating all that is coming, but I'm elaborating it, and I'm producing the background documentation to make it credible. I just wrote a new article, which I finished yesterday. It's been sending it around a bit for a symposium that I'll be organizing in February. It's the the, the uh, secret humanity secret mission symposium, and I wrote the keynote paper on it about life in the universe, uh, showing the science for uh, showing what what how life is emerging in the universe, and the mission of humanity. So that's the title, and I mean a lot of this came to me. But I'm background. I'm researching the background. I'm researching the supports for it. So I'm just totally it's just hanging in the air. I try to convince people this is not just a personal insight. There is something deeper behind it. And Perfect. so, that in as much as I've helped with that, helped by a bit of flow coming through me, I'm very grateful for that. And I don't hesitate to follow it. So there it is. The the startup is comes to me, but then the follow-up is with me and from me. Don't you think that that's what every inventor and every composer and every author is doing at the end of the day? And then we get these ideas and they're coming from God or spirit or source or whatever you want to call it. And and then we, we work on that when we get an idea. Absolutely. One has to have the courage to do that. And not to be frightened by the way, well, these are big, big questions. How can I answer them? I mean, we have to try. Use one's intuition. Einstein said intuition and imagination is more important than reasoning and intelligence. I think it's, it's at least as important. We have to come, we have confidence in the fact that we are embedded in an information field, the quantum field which conveys and conserves all the information in the world. And we can tap into that field. It's a deep resource. It's in us. And the big task, the big job for humanity is not to hesitate to go into one's creative resources, because there we will find the answer how to move behind the crisis, beyond the crisis, and move and create a more peaceful and more cooperative world. Because in us is this tendency to cooperate, to work with together with people, to find out what there is behind the surface, behind the facades. I think and all that is actually in us. We have to tap into it. And I'm trying to show that this can be done. And if we do it, we will find a way up. What I call the upshift, a global upshift beyond the current crisis prone and crisis open uh, world that is threatening us, but at the same time giving us the opportunity to change because we know and this doesn't go like this anymore. It has got to change and now there is an opening. Now much of humanity is beginning to feel itself, to begin to see itself as a planetary species, as having something to do together. Humanity has something to do with the way we evolve, with the way the world is developing. So I think this is a big development. There is a true upshift happening underneath the crisis, underneath the problems that we we learn about every day, the wars, the violence, the the refugees, all, all the unsustainabilities that we find today. 
underneath this all, there is a development. People are beginning to recognize each other and beginning to see each other as a species on Earth whose job, whose mission is not only to survive, but to help this planet bring forth higher and higher levels of life, of coherence. So I think this is something that's happening. You've got to wake up to it and move with it. As the young people say in the Star Wars, go with the force. The force, yes. <laughs> the force is evolution. The force be with you. The force you. is the universe. Yeah. Right, right. Well, I think you bring up a really good point, and certainly you're, an ex- you're a great example of we don't have to have any formal training in order to use our imaginations and tap into our intuition. I'm an example, too. I'm, a, I'm an inventor of surgical devices sold throughout the world. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a medical provider. And yet I was able to do that and lots of other things. So I think we limit ourselves. Wouldn't you agree? Because we think, well, we have to have that degree or we have to study this or we have to do that. Whereas when we are led, when we have an idea that comes in and it resonates with us, take a step and follow it and see where it leads. And certainly you've done that many times throughout your life. I've come to believe, and I've set documentation for it too, that this quantum field, which carries information, which I call the Akashic field, like the old notion of Akash as a dimension, as a deeper dimension in the world. This is not big, picked, up, picked up again in quantum physics. So there is this quantum field, which is communicates all the information that we need, all the information that we need to have in order to live, to survive, to move forward. And we can just allow it to come, allow it, not suppress it. I think it's there, and we know that it's available for us. It's channeling, if you like, but it's in an ordinary, everyday sense also. Every, every time we ask a question, every time we allow our intuition to open up, we have the answers coming to us. The Easterners knew this, the Buddhists knew this, you know, all the, the Indian Ayurvedic thinkers knew this. I think the great spiritual masters of all ages knew it. And now we have to recognize that this is true. This is something that's happening. It's just always guiding humanity. And in the last 15, 20, 100, 150 years maybe, we have been so enamored with technology and this pursuit of, of technical innovations and of money and of power, that we have suppressed this innate ability to, to ask who we are and how, what it is that we need really to do. Something more to do, more than simply gathering power and money for ourselves. That's part of it. That's good to do, but it's not the real purpose of life. The purpose of life, if anything, is to help flower life on Earth. Because this corner of the universe is a unique, precious corner. Surely there are other planets with life, but they are far away, and they are not in this part of the universe. We are pioneers on this universe as a conscious species, and it is our sacred duty, I call it, to use our consciousness to bring forth this impression, this idea that we, together as a species, can create a higher level of order, of coherence, of love, guided by love on this planet. And then we know when our consciousness picks that up, our consciousness communicates to all others. Because consciousness, as Erwin Schrödinger and other great physicists and scientists told us, consciousness is one. Now we know that. Life is one. What we do affects not only us, it affects everything and everybody around us, especially other people like us who are similarly asking. We all get onto this cosmic internet and we find the way forward. You have been doing that, I think, all your life. You are doing it. And it's a great, a wonderful service to humanity to show that it can be done. It produces results. And if we want to find a way out, the way forward from this crisis, it's not by just amassing the greatest possible interest power and money for ourselves without regard to others, but is to look at the whole system, the entire system of life on earth. How can we be a positive part of that? Sounds like a spiritual, esoteric question, but it's very concrete. 
unless we create a basis for flowering life on the planet, we cannot flower and go forward ourselves. We are part of the system, and the system is guided as a whole. This is the old holism, which is coming through non-quantum physics as well. The whole system is but corresponds to all its parts. It sets up the parts. We cannot just concentrate on the part and forget the whole. Let's try to get the whole underway so that it can thrive, so that all parts are collaborating, are coherent with every other part. That oneness which we can create by tapping into our deeper sources and our consciousness, that's what will bring us forward. That's the way forward. And I'm sure that we are beginning to enter it, despite, or not even just despite, but because of all the great challenges that you know, and, and, and living through the wars, the violence, the injustice, all of that is triggering, triggering a counter movement, a counter movement of finding ourselves how we can work, live, and love together. Well, you mentioned the word love a couple of times in there. And is that how people can tell whether they're being led? If it feels loving, if it feels good, if they want to know more versus if they feel like, oh, this feels bad, this, this causes anxiety or whatever. Is love really how we can discern what's worth exploring? And you know, how it feels when we hear something? Absolutely right. You know, in the scientific perspective, what you're looking at is systems that are quantum systems connected to all other systems int intimately, directly. Systems that have integrality, that have wholeness. The one word that is best used for that is coherence. A system that is coherent with all other systems around it, communicates with all other systems, feels what's happening to other systems gives information that other systems can pick up. When that is happening, you know, then we have a feeling, and that feeling to perceptive people, to open people, is the feeling of unconditional love. It's the feeling that we are here to work together with others in harmony, in cooperation, and together to move on to the next level of our evolution, which is creating a harmonious and peaceful world on Earth. That is the scientific background for what we feel intuitively. We are creating more and more coherence in this world. You know how the world, just one more word on this, <clears throat> how this whole process started. It's starting 13.7 billion years ago after the Big Bang. It started when hydrogen nuclei began to associate free electrons in the energy shells around them and create stable atoms. They joined together to create helium atoms, and they went on to the higher and higher, more and more complex elements of, of, the, of the energy of the table of the elements, and they be all the atoms. And they, then the molecules, then the cells, then the organisms, then the ecologists. All of this 13.7 billion years ago it started, and now it's accelerating. More and more, is we are creating a world which is interacting through artificial intelligence, yes, through the internet, yes, but also through our feeling. When we enter into ourselves, we can communicate. I'm sure you, it's your experience as well. We communicate with each other. We enter into a tremendous network, and the key to that is the sense of oneness, which is communicated through the sense of love. We are here to do things together because we are partners. We are at its forefront. We are pioneers of an evolutionary drive that has been going on in the universe since the Big Bang. Now it's moving to the point where on this planet, evolution can become conscious. This is what my creed, this is my credo. I'm starting a program now called a Movement for Conscious Evolution. We can become conscious of the fact that evolution is driving us towards higher and higher levels of integrality, of wholeness, of oneness. And the vehicle for that, the motivation for that, is the sense of unconditional, fully dedicated love, appreciation for each other. People are beginning to feel that. There's a wonderful movement on the way where people are waking up. This is a process that's being triggered by all the, tri all the challenges all the tragedies that's going on at the same time is triggering a change. 
nothing is the way it was. Everything is moving. And people, perceptive people like yourself, the people that you are leading, are showing the way. That's through the understanding of we are one. And on this planet, we are moving forward to higher levels of coherence toward led by our consciousness and led by our intuitive sense of oneness, love. That is the way forward. It's not an idle way, it's an active way. It means being a pioneer, being an activist, working together consciously. I think it's beginning to happen. And it's a very encouraging sign that it is happening. You say everything that's gone on in the past is part of what goes on in the present. How does that help us create? Can you expand on that a little? Explain why you think that or why you believe that? Well, the movement on Earth is, or on the universe altogether, to start looking at the biggest picture, is from chaos to coherence. Very simple to remember that. Initially, after the Big Bang, it was maximum chaos. It was the highest level of entropy, as physicists would say, you know. Since then, stable entities came about, coherent systems, atoms, molecules, crystals, cells, organisms, ecologies, entire galaxies. The movement is towards from coherence, from, from chaos towards coherence. What went on in the past is continuing today, but today is becoming conscious. We have left, we have arrived at the position on this earth where we can consciously perceive this, this tremendous drive forward. Evolution, the evolution of life, the evolution of planets, the evolution of ecosystems. Here on this planet, as an example of what is happening throughout space and time. So what happens in the past is continuing today. All of you moving into higher and higher levels. Now, for the first time in human history, <clears throat> that we are talking about humanity, the human community. How do we respond as humanity to the challenge of a war in, by Russia, in the Middle East, wherever it's happening, all the wars that are going on at the same time? How do we respond to climate change, to heating up of the atmosphere, to the drying up of soils? We respond as a people. We respond, we respond as a species. And this is not a local thing. This is a non-local phenomenon. Non-local means that it's what's happening here affects, directly affects what is happening elsewhere. So being part of this is to wake up. Being part of this is to know that we are on this soil, on the, on, on the threshold of a new stage, a new stage where humanity is consciously becoming a species which is taking in hand its own evolution. We cannot stay the way we were. We cannot stay we are now. We need to move forward because we also cannot go back. We need to go forward and the way forward is the way of evolution. The process that started in the universe all those billions of years ago and the way it is moving forward because now it's fast. Now it's becoming consciousness on this planet through humanity. Evolution is becoming conscious. It's a tremendous step forward in this process. What went on in the past is going on today, will go on tomorrow. But if you make it conscious, consciously guided, then we'll accelerate it. We'll make sure that it doesn't derail. Evolution can also go and lead to extinction. Evolution can take long terms. There's no, no guarantee that it moves forward. But if you become conscious of it, then we don't let it derail. Then we keep it going forward on the right way. We know that the way forward is coherence, is love, so cooperation, and working together to maintain the planet within the limits of sustainability. We now know whether it's through the environmental problems, whether it's through the, through the refugee problems, whether it's through the, the thermodynamic problems of carbon release, whatever. These all elements of a problem which says we are here to change, we need to change, and to go with Gandhi who said, be the change you want to see in the world. Yes, now we need, we ourselves need to become a conscious evolutionary species, a member of that species, and then evolution will pick us up and we move forward because it's ready for it. 
the world is ready for a positive change. It must go forward, otherwise it will collapse. And we have in us this drive, this drive for revolution, this drive which is manifest in us as love, as seeking love, seeking oneness, that is in us. So if we allow it to come forth and guide our actions, then we can create what we are meant to be, a cooperative, peaceful planetary species. Is this what you were just talking about, what you're calling the new cosmology, which goes beyond what Einstein discovered? Can you give us a kind of a comparison of what Einstein discovered and how this is, goes beyond that? Well, quantum physics is based on quantum cosmology. You know. Quantum physics actually it, it doesn't falsify, it doesn't contradict anything that Einstein has done. He just built it into a cosmological science. Einstein has laid the foundations so this idea of space-time and, and, and evolution in space-time. Now, in the new cosmology, we see that the whole universe joins together as one system. That one system means that every part is coherent with every other part. Here and wherever else in the universe, there is contact, there is communication. The word for that that is used nowadays is non-locality. What we do is not limited to here and now. It's a fact there and then, in the past, in the present, in the future, wherever on earth, in time and in space, it's all joined together in a oneness. But we can make this conscious so that we make it a oneness, move forward in the right direction and not encounter obstacles which then help it or make it break down. Extinction is always possible. But evolution is also possible. And if we are conscious of the difference, conscious of what evolution is, then we can make this, put this critical input, the, 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 the essential kick, as cyberneticians call, call it, the little launch kick or movement that will shift the, put the whole system into that positive mode where it's moving forward. It's ready for it. And with our consciousness, we can be that critical mass this critical mass, as Margaret Media, the anthropologist, said, is always change the world and nothing else, this she said. We can be the critical mass, and there are many elements, many groups beginning to form that look like they're becoming the critical mass. We help them to join together. We help them become conscious, and then they'll find a way. We don't have to make it. We don't have to conduct it. We just have to safeguard it, allow this new development to take place, to continue, and to flower. One last question. Why do we incarnate? Good question. I think, my, I'll give my personal, personal opinion on that. I think what we are here for is not limited to one, uh, one lifetime. What we're here for is to introduce a higher level of life, of coherence, and of consciousness on this planet and insert this consciousness as part of the process of evolution in the universe. We are here to make evolution conscious, and that is not a job for a single lifetime. That is something that has to continue. We produce the information, that information that we are producing in a lifetime is our consciousness, is registered in the Akashic field, in the quantum field, and is there even beyond our physical lifetime. It is there to work and to motivate and to act as a, as a dynamic tendency forward throughout many lifetimes, permanently probably. Life is continuous. Life is not finite. The universe is not finite either, even though it's very, very long and it's moving through different phases. So I think what you're here for is what the ancient seers, the great spiritual masters have always told us to become one with the universe, to become achieve a higher level of consciousness and help this consciousness, this quantum consciousness, as we now call it, to become an active force guiding development in the universe. So we are a past, past and present masters of guidance, pioneers. That is our role. And humanity is here to fulfill what I now call a sacred mission the sacred mission 
to create a coherent world on earth. For all living things, is a higher level of consciousness so they can cooperate and move together forward. We can do it. We are beginning to do it. We have to accelerate it and reinforce it. That's our sacred mission. How can people find out more about you and your work? Well, I mean, you use my name, every last little, I mean, of the books, for example, there are 10 or 10 or 12 websites. My latest books, you can look at the internet, are called The, the Survival Imperative, where I describe the practical dimension of what we need to survive and to flourish on this earth. My latest book, we published a couple of weeks ago, is written, co-written by 35 spiritual leaders and scientists in the world. It's called The Great Upshift. What I talk about is the upshift, the shift into the next level of evolution on Earth. <clears throat> so look at my Every Laszlo books, look at my website, you will find the information there. Right, and we'll post all of that in the show notes. Please do. What an honor and a thrill for me to get to meet you and talk with you. And thank you for taking the time to share your wisdom and your brilliance with all of us. And I look forward to continuing the conversation another time. So everybody, that's that. it. I do Go too, ahead. Uli. You are a pioneer and, and, and a mover forward intuitively, but scientific at the same time. If we need people like yourself, let's, let's do it together. I would be honored. Everybody sending you lots of love from Sweet Home Alabama mwah, and from Italy where Dr. Laszlo is. We'll see you next time. Indeed. All my love and all my greetings to you and for, for you and for humanity in which you are a pioneer. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow Julie on Instagram and YouTube at Ask Julie Ryan and like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. To schedule an appointment or submit a question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com. This show is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be medical, psychological, financial, or legal advice. Please contact a licensed professional. The Ask Julie Ryan Show, Julie Ryan and all parties involved in producing, recording, and distributing it assume no responsibility for listeners' actions based on any information heard on this or any Ask Julie Ryan shows or podcasts.